I've been um, looking into the voice and um, looking into language and like looking for a more embodied translations for language and somehow I ended up um, working with songs um, and often like you know I would start with writing and then um, these songs would come out and it's kind of a bit of a backward uh, working process because I wouldn't know where they would go. Sometimes they would end up being um, performances, sometimes uh, they would end up uh, as, a, as a soundtrack for the film. Like uh, such was the case in, uh, in the film as uh, songs from the compost, mutating uh, bodies, imploding stars. I was just um, <clears throat> recording in a very open-ended uh, way, kind of uh, heavily under the influence of Octavia Butler, who I've been like uh, reading a lot in the last years. And uh, the songs are kind of uh, they are in a way like a simplified, um, <clears throat> or not simplified, but they are some kind of a compact translations of some of the very dense like concepts and landscapes and uh, ideas from Butler's books. How? One of such things is, for instance, um, relationships and forms of intimacy between uh, different forms of life, between human and other forms of life, such as bacteria or plants or animals and um, she really like unfolds these relationships in like multiple um, layers like they can be symbiotic they can be parasitic and quite dark but uh, always intimate and uh, yeah, so the songs, they were kind of translations of these um, intimacies. And then there is always a sense of multitude and multiple identities that are um, present in the books and so in the songs. And then I started working with uh, this um, vocoder to alienate myself from my own voice in this kind of quite silly but very efficient way. With these songs, like I talk often in the first person, but in fact, like I'm trying to talk on behalf of many other things, life or uh, animate or not. And uh, the voice like changes from single tone to multitude and um, from very like high to low to tones, like transmitting all these different entities and identities. Maria, Osho Skita and Julia Stepanitita, they made these like beautiful um, clothes to reverberate all these ideas of dying and uh, decay like by digging clothes in the, in the soil t to rot them and to let them be eaten by um, like soil microorganisms and bacteria. The choreography in the film echoes the ideas of all these like 
Mm. Um, beyond the human embodiments, it echoes in its like, choreography and how these human bodies engage with the landscape and that often happens in this um, quite um, non-vertical way. There's a lot of um, movement that is either horizontal or um, they are moving using four limbs as if they were spiders and gliding and there's a lot of like gravity and working with like body weight and like kind of surrendering bodies to each other and to the forest floor. Another thing that I was quite curious about was this like um, uh, fluid frontier between the inside and the outside that uh, appears through these processes of uh, rotting and uh, dying on the forest floor. How things seamlessly are dying and and growing at the same time from one from each other and that like sort of uh, this idea was like uh, sort of um, uh, massaging this idea in the in the lyrics of the song in this uh, part of how about decay rotting decomposing as technologies for nonlinear time and yeah I was just like sort of curious to pay attention to this because mostly like we sort of talk about the bright side of symbiosis as, as this like positive cooperative um, activity but there is like all these like much ostensibly darker because they're not really like darker but they, in our culture I guess like there is a fair degree of like dying so yeah they they can be perceived as darker aspects of this like symbiotic life but that are like equally necessary these processes of rotting and decay and uh, yeah the joy of decay <laughs> I have no like skills in singing so I just spend like hours in the studio taking the best <laughs> take <laughs> and I'm quite drawn to the idea of this kind of uh, I've been interested in trauma for a while and to um, the um, sort of the effect of voice the visceral effect of voice onto the nervous system of the receiver and I've been so when I sing or when I record I try to have that in the back of my brain like how that will like how these sounds will be massaging the nervous system of the receiver and uh, and then I like work with words in a quite obsessive almost sculptural way also mm. I write and a lot and then I cut out and a lot and then I really try to look at like rhythm repetition and um, rhyme and um, the hypnotic effect that it could cause also like yeah I'm just I guess I'm quite drawn to this like seduction of the song also and it's yeah the song is a vehicle to sort of take these complex ideas from like literature or like ecofeminism or theory and like make them into turn them into these like snappy um, compact catchy <laughs> melodic and um, um, songs in this one particular performance like for instance incantation karaoke this vulnerability of presence and voice helps in the end to create a collective singing situation for the audience through the piece I'm again channeling all these like other organisms or ideas that have kind of have been damaged by either human arrogance or modernity and um, so it's just my voice no instruments no nothing and the voice like changes from very like low to high and reverberated and uh, what basically what I'm singing about is, is kind of uh, 
the sweet and sometimes erotic revenge of all the little creatures. I am an oyster floating in your mouth. I will absorb you from the other side. I am a muddy water. I am a mugwort, a dream inducing medicinal plant. I am a mugwort, an ancient form of birth control. I can relieve the pain of menstruation. There's also this dynamic of um, I and you that's present in the text. And in the second part of this performance, then I, I make an invitation for people uh, to sing these same songs. And uh, it kind of it's offers this kind of moment for uh, collective creativity to unfold in a playful way. In a, like, and I try to create a situation for that that is like welcoming and non-hierarchical, like the lights are quite dark and um, dim and um, yeah, I try to facilitate this mood of permission. I enjoy like performing this piece because it like allows me to work like with the fabric of reality that is like present in the room, like sort of I'm able to address different people individually and also adapt the lyrics that I'm telling to them, depending on their like personalities. Like I like to, if I sense like a strong male ego in the space, for instance, I like like to come closer and like deliver particular lyrics to them. Or if I, if I see a child and I adapt my presence and my gaze to uh, sort of to resonate uh, with the energy of the child. I've been quite, um, obsessed with listening of gospel music in the last half a year also because of its like sort of energetic and qualities and the the effect it has on my nervous system I'm quite uh, sort of um, happy with its like uplifting um, mood yeah, it's something that we know, of course, is like this degree of eroticism present in Catholic uh, tradition. And this idea of, um, there's a lot of surrender also of yourself to this like higher force or like God. And I, try, I started writing my own text, kind of borrowing these like, structures of gospel music a bit. These formulations, may you or... Uh, it's kind of, yeah, this idea of the sacred. I'm kind of trying to figure out if it's possible to work with this idea of the sacred without like um, attaching it to particular, any particular God or like liberating it from that God maybe. And I started like all these new recordings, stretching across many themes, like from erotics to the soil and uh, the body, pleasure, and sort of always using this uh, gospel structures as a, as a bit of a holding structure to it and I don't know yet what it will become. There is this also a desire to work with language as a spell making practice, <clears throat> as a language, as a like tool to organize the world and senses and at the same time it's all the time being confronted by this uh, so this, it's like I sing from the position of assuming power, but it's, this position is always contrasted by my inability to actually sing and, <laughs> and uh, fragile or often like vulnerable voice that comes out that keeps on trying to assume this power and, uh, and propose these different visions of living. <laughs> I am a slime oozing down your throat, down your veins, down your genitals, down your destiny, down your memory, memory, slime, mucus, mold, humidity, humidity, multiply, multiply.
deep line. There is always this contradiction that is like power is being assumed by this voice that is like very unstable and broken and uh, sometimes it can sing, sometimes it cannot. I'm also now extending these uh, um, irregularities of the voice into stuttering and like speech repetition. Like, and I'm quite like curious of what happens when the voice of authority becomes um, incomprehensible or inaudible, but it keeps on like trying to hold onto that power and uh, keeps on talking, but it's not always clear what it's what it's trying to say. <clears throat>